This is the Dacia Zandero, which is one of the cheapest cars that you can buy. And in Germany, it is the cheapest car as it starts at 11,300 euros. However, the car we have right here is the Zandero Stepre. What's the difference between the Stepre and the Zandero? Let's check it out. The main difference between the Zandero and the Stepre is that the Stepre is supposed to be the stepping stone for an off-roady design. That was a good one. You can also see that we, for instance, have a roof bar, which can carry up to 80 kilograms. We also have a higher ride height, which is a little bit higher than the Sandero, just to be, get that more off-roady safari feel. We also have these black trims around the wheel arches and also on the bottom. Again, that only has a stepway, as well as in the front, we have this um, dirt cover in there, which is another little thing that you get on the stepway. However, the Expression Plus package that we have right here is going to start at 18,350 euros with the color 650 euros extra. However, in the configurator in Germany, you can't currently configure the Expression Plus and you also can't get this color. So with the total um, that we have on here, it's going to cost you 19,000 euros. So let's check out the front of the Dacia Zandero. As you can see, we have the new Dacia logo on here, which is very nice. Also, we can see that on every new Dacia. If you want to check out our review on the Dacia Duster, you can also check that on the top left corner. We also have the stepway right below here, and we have intakes, which are all actually real, which is very nice, apart from this kind of fake stuff on the side, but doesn't look bad. It just... It adds a little bit more to the off-road touch, as well as the trim down here. In my opinion, it looks pretty good in the front. And we also have the LED lights in here. And just like in any other Dutch here, we do have the, our high beams in halogen, which is not the nicest thing. If we go on over to the side again, we can see, just like I said, the trim of the wheels, um, or the wheel arches in those kind of off-road des design. We also have 16-inch wheels on here, which do have a pretty cool design. Pretty good fan of them. And again, the color, you can't get them. Roof capacity, like I said, 80 kilograms. And also one thing I do like is that you have your side mirrors in this kind of like um, gray color, which looks pretty cool. It's like a darker gray, looks pretty nice. I like that. And also some more trim down there. We also have keyless go, which is very nice for um, the price that you're paying. And then up here, we have 50 liters of um, capacity in our tank and how much we use. Let's actually check that out while we're driving. The consumption that Dutch claims is 5.5. We've been able to get 6.9, but that's due to the fact that we've mainly been driving in the city. And obviously if you're driving in the city, you do have a little bit of a higher consumption. And you also have a little bit of a higher consumption considering that we've been driving a little bit faster. So I'd say you can probably get that down to around uh, 6, 6.2, that's probably what you're going to be cruising at because you do also have the manual gearbox. You can obviously adjust the consumption a little bit more to your liking because you have more control over it. Um, and you can also, well, you don't, you do actually have an eco mode, so you could theoretically also use that to lower your consumption as well. We have not been driving that, so that's why it's a little bit higher. Um, but if you do want to get an automatic gearbox, you can also get that, which is the 90 CVT, which is also an automatic gearbox, but you can't get it for this model right here. The design of the Dutch Air Zandero on the back is kind of, well, it's not really mine. It doesn't look that nice, it's a little bit bulky, but what do you expect for, uh, I guess, 11,000 euros? Also, you have this very big antenna, which if you're going through um, a washing a washing machine, if you're going through, what are they called? Washing street, I guess. Um, I don't know, it might fall off or might break, not the nicest thing. And we do also have this weird lip in here, where, which is for your trunk, um, and then you can press it down there. It's a little bit weird. We also have a capacity on our um, towing capacity of 1,100 kilograms, and the car only weighs 1,181 kilograms, which is fairly light, so you can basically tow another Zandero behind it. In here, we have 381 liters, which might not be the biggest, but we also have a little bit of storage down here if you take out the spare wheel, which you also get in here, which is pretty cool. Um, and But if you flip over the seats, you can get up to a thousand... 181. Those numbers are just messing with my head all the time, and you can also obviously take out this cover. Might not be the biggest, but it does fairly good for a city car. Under the hood of the Zandero Stepway, we have a 110 TCE motor, which produces 110 horsepower with 200 newton meters of torque. It's a one liter four cylinder engine with a six speed manual gearbox, and it has a VMAX of 174 kilometers an hour. So what do you expect from a Zandero in the inside? Well, you don't expect much, but you do actually get some nice features in here. You get heated seats for both the uh, passenger and also the driver. You also get an automatic climate control, which is very nice, and a navigation display, which is just like in any other Dacia, but it is is fairly decent and you it, it does the job and you can also use Apple CarPlay via the USB cable or Android Auto if you want that. And um, the seats are actually fairly comfortable they're just basically the same as in the jogger so they are fairly comfortable so long rides um, I mean they're not sporty or anything like that but they just do their job. We also have this kind of like um, I don't know how to describe it but it's like a 
like a carpet pattern on here. We also have it on the side, as you can see over there, maybe a little bit better with again, the stitching or not the stitching, but the orange colors, which look pretty cool with contrast to the outside color. We also have our six speed manual gearbox in here. Like I said, we also have a USB-C cable in here or USB port and a 12 volt in here and some storage space um, where you can put stuff, stuff in there. We also have a, get a parking brake, which is nice and or an electrical parking brake and a little bit of storage space in here, not much in there and two cup holders in the middle as well. For the steering wheel, it's the same as in any other Dacia, no, no touch controls and anything like that. You do have a couple of controls in here with some assist and stuff like that and your basic stuff. You also get a little bit of a um, cluster display, which is not special. It just has a couple of different modes in there. We'll look at that a little bit once we're driving, but that's basically it for the front. So the back of the Zandero is basically as minimalistic as you can get. You have the seats in the front, which are the same as in the back, so they are fairly comfortable. With a very interesting isofix point, um, which are kind of like tied together, I guess, you, so you kind of have to break them to actually en enter them. Um, but that's not bad. You don't also don't have a middle console. You can also just um, flip over the middle console. You have to flip over the whole bench. And the other thing is that you really don't have anything in here. You have uh, 12 volt in the middle, um, but you don't have any climate control in the back and just automatic windows in the back, which is nice. The other thing that you get is you get a pretty good amount of headroom. You actually have a lot of space above the head and legroom is also tremendous. You have a lot of space in here, which is very, very nice. Um, but one thing that's not so cool is that your arm rest, you have like this floating space in here. So your hand is always going to go down a little bit and otherwise you have to put it back here, which is not the most comfortable over long range. Other than that, it's fairly comfortable in the back. So what do you expect from driving a Zandero, which is one of the cheapest cars that you can personally buy? Well, you expect a car that gets you from A to B and that's basically, it. you don't expect anything else. And if that's the only thing you expect, then this is the perfect car for you because this car does exactly that. There's not much to it. The car doesn't have any much functions. It doesn't give you many options that you can personally choose. It just is a perfect car to get you from A to B because you have a fairly good suspension, which is fairly smooth. It's not the smoothest, obviously, so if there's bigger bumps in the road, you're definitely gonna feel them. However, you don't have many don't have many issues that the car can generate because you don't have any well you don't have much technical stuff you don't have a heads-up display you do have a couple of systems features on here for instance you have a speed limiter and also a cruise control which you might not expect from this car but you do get it you also have blind spot mirroring which is actually very cool for the car because there's some bigger cars or some more expensive cars which don't have that but obviously that is a couple of features that you get from the expression plus package which you can't personally get in Germany right now but obviously for the almost the same price you can get the extra plus package as well if you want to get that but how's the ride quality the ride quality is actually fairly good um, obviously the seats are fairly comfortable so you do actually feel fairly nice in here um, but however the noise from the outside is fairly loud there's a lot of wind noise that you can hear um, the tire noise is not that much but the wind noise is definitely a lot but in general the isolation obviously what do you expect from a car that's that cheap you don't expect to have the best isolation that you can physically have but you do also have a couple other comfortable features for instance you do have apple carplay or android auto with the cable you do have heated seats and you do also have a fairly good surround view when you're driving in city you do you can basically see everything you do have a fairly big rear window like i said blind spot mirroring as well and you do also have sensors when parking as well as a rear view camera so let's actually show you that so we do have a rear view camera as you can see and it also does beep let's see if it does that here it does have a pretty cool beeping sound We do also have obviously the navigation display in here, which is, it does its job. It's just the basic stuff that um, Dutch has where you can just zoom out a little bit. It's just the very basic map and it obviously takes a little bit to load because it's not the fastest system. But like I said, Apple CarPlay, you can connect it with the Bluetooth, you can connect it via cable, whatever you want everything that you need. How is the steering like? It actually feels pretty robust and you can see we're wobbling around fairly decent because the car actually does have a good amount of tilt to it because it is lifted up a little bit higher, like unlike the normal Zandero. But when you're going around corners, it does also feel fairly decent. It has a good, um, it does have a good, how do you say, angle of attack into the corners and then the power out of the corner, obviously, if you're in a little bit lower gear, you can obviously get a little bit faster. And then 10 seconds from zero to 100, obviously depends on how quick you are with the shifting and how fluid you are in that. But it really is a car that you, for 11,000 euros, you cannot go wrong at this car. Obviously, if you get the step rate, it's gonna start at 14,000, so a little bit more, but you can really not go wrong with the car that you're getting here, with the comfort and everything that you get from the car. It really does feel good. So what's my final verdict on the Dacia Zandero? Well, the Zandero obviously is a little bit less expensive, 11,300, and the step rate at 11,000, uh, 14,400, which is still a very good price. What you're getting from the car here is really 
you can't complain about that. Obviously, if you don't like a manual gearbox, you can change it over to the um, automatic transmission, or if you're not a big fan of the color, you can obviously change that. There's a lot of different design options that you can choose from, which is very nice. And you really get a car that you basically expect. It does the job that you need it to, and for that price, you really can't go wrong. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.